Hi there, welcome to the Fierce Factor Podcast. I'm your host, Kaylee Lindholm. And I think it's time for us women to shift the conversation in business and step into our feminine leadership to do the most iconic work the aesthetic industry has ever seen. Each week, I'll be bringing a powerful dose of strategy, sarcasm, solutions, and sass that will rev up your creativity and ignite your brilliance as you link arms with me along our shared path of personal and professional growth in 20 minutes or less. Let's go. Hello, leader. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of the Fierce Factor podcast. It's your host, Kaylee Lindholm here. I am the founder and CEO of KLC Consulting, where we are on a mission to help 100 inspiring and intentional women cross the next million dollar milestone in their business this year. And that mission is something we think, eat, sleep, breathe, and invest deeply in to accomplish every single day over here at KLC. And that's why I am committed to helping you start every single Monday morning with a concentrated 20-minute dose of inspiration that will empower you and uplift you to face the nuances of business leadership with clarity and confidence. And that's, of course, my hope for us today. I found that there's a lot of education, support, and resources for practice owners who are starting out. You know, pick a weekend and there's an aesthetic conference to attend, pick an Instagram profile and there's an injector who has a pop-up academy, Google a consultant and there's a YouTube video, mine included. There are a ton of tactics aimed toward giving insights and information about what to do next. And we as humans love the tactics. We love the idea that we are just one software program program or device away from success. And let's be honest with ourselves, as a society, we're addicted to instant gratification. See any headline that claims the quickest path to time and money freedom, and we're hooked, right? And I'm recording this episode here in Punta Mita, Mexico, at the tail end of our incredible leadership retreat, where 10 entrepreneurial-minded women collectively recharged, refocused, renewed, and really re-energized together. The level of conversation from building team to scaling to selling businesses in the tens of millions of dollars was both inspiring and rare. And I'm fired up because if you're just starting your business, like I said, there's a hundred places to go for guidance. But if you've already grown beyond the million dollar milestone, your questions are going to be less about marketing or sales tactics and much more about the pathway to architect your thought leadership in the aesthetic industry and how to become a woman who is capable of achieving success that makes other people uncomfortable. And that's why in our academy, we aim to stand shoulder to shoulder with women of this caliber of mindset, women who are breaking molds and disrupting the status quo. One of the insightful discussions that came up this week was how is everyone bracing for an economic recession? Is this actually going to happen? Is this something we should be concerned about? How can we set our business up to thrive in any economic downturn? And it happens to be midterm election day today as I record this podcast. Interest rates are on the rise. The housing market, it's correcting itself. And what this generally means is that the good old post-pandemic aesthetic boom is stabilizing. A 2022 article published in The Economist titled, What America's Next Recession Will Look Like, A Mild Downturn May Be Followed by a Painfully Prolonged Recovery. This article quotes, these days it's hard to turn a corner without bumping into predictions of an American recession. Big banks, prominent economists, and former officials are all saying that a downturn is a near certainty as the Federal Reserve rustles inflation under control. Three quarters of CEOs of Fortune 500 companies are braced for growth to go negative before the end of 2023. Bond yields and consumer surveys are flashing red. Google searches for recession are soaring. The track record is certainly ominous. As Larry Summers, a former Treasury Secretary, has observed, whenever inflation has risen above 4% and unemployment has dipped below 4%, two thresholds that, when breached, indicate economic overheating, well, America has suffered a recession within two years, and it's well across both thresholds now. 
But it's not all doom and gloom because what I want to share with you today is a blueprint for leaning into the recession, the quickest path to time and money freedom. And there are stories upon stories of fairy tale recession triumphs. In early 2000, a five year old online bookseller called Amazon.com heard of them, sold 672 million in convertible bonds to shore up its financial position. One month later, the dot-com bubble burst. More than half of all digital startups went out of business over the next few years, including lots of Amazon's then rivals in e-commerce. Had the bubble burst just a few weeks earlier, one of the most successful companies ever might have fallen victim to that recession. Another example, Warby Parker. Warby Parker is an example of a brand that was founded during a great recession. The reason they were able to succeed during this time, they filled an enormous gap in the marketplace. While you might think that you shouldn't start a business during an economic crisis, it's actually a good time to notice gaps and pain points in the marketplace and fill that need. You can, in fact, get ruthless about focus on marketing the products and services that drive the most profit for your practice. Or even better, you can focus on a membership model that incentivizes your most valuable customers. And I'll talk more about this in a few minutes. What Warby Parker did was they owned the niche in their market when they realized it was hard to purchase an affordable pair of fashionable glasses online. They filled a need and customers showed up even though they weren't spending a lot of money. The company was marketed as affordable and customers needed an affordable glassware solution. So even if your company isn't as big as these examples, remember that there's a lot of enterprise companies that start and flourish during a recession. Leader, the difference maker here for these companies was about preparation. Among the companies that stagnated in the aftermath of the Great Recession, few made contingency plans or thought through alternative scenarios. According to the Bain report, when the downhill hit, they switched to survival mode, making deep cuts and reacting defensively. Many of the companies that merely limp through a recession are slower to recover and they never really catch up. In the next part of this episode, I'm going to share with you my tenets of stabilization that will prepare your aesthetic business to dominate during a recession, just like companies like Warby Parker and Amazon. Tenet number one is to work smarter, not harder. A natural reaction to forecasted stress in your business will be to squeeze in extra patients or add more working hours to your schedule. Be careful here. This week, my team reached out to a business owner to inform her about our final live virtual event we'll be hosting the first week of December. Last month, when we talked to her, she had asked us to get her on the waiting list to make sure she snacked the first seat once we opened admission. Her response, however, this month was, regrettably, now I don't have the time. And look, I've been there. I totally get it. When you're faced with an immediate choice between developing strategy or (laughs) collecting cold hard cash, it can feel conflicting and often counterintuitive. But as our economy is tightening, your primary objective as a business owner should be preparing the business to capitalize on opportunity. This only happens by making, not getting the time to think and plan for the future. In both case studies I referenced a few minutes ago, these companies had put a plan in place that would pair them to essentially zig while other competitors zagged. Remember that when a recession hits, money doesn't just go away. There is a transfer of wealth. Individuals and companies who prepared correctly will not just stay okay, they will thrive. They will have the infrastructure, the systems, the cash reserves, and the customers who will all remain in position to spend. Tenant number two leader is to double down on long-term treatment plans. As I mentioned in tenant one, part of working smarter, not harder, is becoming very discerning about your business model, the products and services that drive the most impact, and leaning into the clients who are vested in you. Imagine you have a thousand patients in your database. Those clients bring in $1 million in revenue per year. According to the Pareto Principle or the Law of Unequal Distribution, you can assume that only 200 of those thousand will net 800,000 of the million dollars annually. If you're busy dillying with the wrong 600 or 800 patients, you're missing a huge opportunity here. Look, think about the most financially stable people you know. Are they worried about a recession? No, they're ready to capitalize on opportunity. 
Your patients who are investing tens of thousands with you per month or quarter are going to continue to do so. And one way to ensure this is to develop a long-term care plan that creates a multiplier effect. For example, perhaps your most valuable patients are investing in facial balancing and maintenance programs such as peels, energy-based device treatments, and skincare. Instead of trying to sell more of these services to everyone, think about your most lucrative customer and double down on their purchasing power. Get them on long-term care plans that bring additional value. Maybe you're adding in IV infusions, hormone supplements, nutraceuticals, etc. What happens too often is we clinch up and start discounting as a way to market our services and make them more affordable to everyone. And the problem with this strategy is when our economy is contracting, you'll be the one taking the hit on your profit margins. If you plan to discount, please begin with a gentle price increase and allow for then some private sales or VIP offers to the right clients. Remember, it's all about working smarter, not harder, and investing in the clients who will continue to support you at the highest value in any economy. Tenant number three is build your damn team. I cannot emphasize enough that the most important part of surviving a recession will be leaning into the top people on your team. This is not a time to cut corners when it comes to pay, training, and open communication with your team members. Eliminating excess through the strategy mentioned in Tenet 2 will allow your team to increase productivity and strengthen relationships with your most lucrative buyers. Your team not only wants to feel confidence that they are well-led, but also have comfort in knowing that you will continue to go all in on them. A team member who feels appreciated and tied into the bigger vision of the organization will be willing to make adaptations and bring creative ideas to the table. Becoming reactive and cutting A-plus team members will without a doubt destroy your team morale, your culture, and the passion to invest in you. Not to mention, while you're developing a strategy to corner the market, how will you possibly be able to do this with a collection of average team members? You guys hear me talk all the time about Nick Saban and the Alabama football program. Can you imagine if he just started thinning out his bench when times got tough? Double down on the people and you will make it through anything. Tenant number four is to create scalable systems. What I mean here is to build infrastructure into your business that will allow you to generate revenue without requiring more of your time injecting or doctoring. So who can help support you here? See how I did that? (laughs) Build your team and allow them to become catalysts for growth for your company. Think outside the box. What are ways you can leverage team or recurring revenue through retail memberships or for purchase at-home programs to diversify your revenue streams and also alleviate the pressure on you as a service provider. Recently, we had a client who hired a dietitian, have consultations, and recommend wellness supplements to aesthetic patients. This service was positioned for only top clients, who, by the way, also happen to be the ones who are eager, willing, and able to make this kind of investment into their own wellness. Her monthly per-patient spend went up nearly $450 per patient per month. Translate this to your most valuable 200 patients. We're talking about another $1,080,000 per year in top line revenue. This doesn't happen by not having time. This happens by doing the work to really understand your business, the gaps in the market, the needs of your most valuable clients, and building and investing into a badass team who can make your strategy a reality. Finally, tenant number five to create abundance during a recession is to invest your earnings. Look, I know it can be tempting to want to save taxes by not paying yourself a salary, or maybe you just want to stockpile as much cash as possible into the business. But remember that true wealth comes by making smart investments when they're on sale to allow you to generate income through these investments. Some of our clients invest in real estate, commodities, gold, treasury bills, or they buy up other companies. I'm not an expert on this, but by any means, do I consult with one? And at the end of the day, an economic recession shouldn't be anything to be worried about if you prepare, plan, and position your business to capitalize and pivot. There's no quick fix or easy button to financial freedom, 
But with the right strategy in place, a time of recession could present an incredible opportunity to build your business, your thought leadership, and your wealth. And P.S., a quick reminder that we have our final PAM event coming up December 5th through 7th. I'm going to teach you how to get wicked smart in your business by utilizing my proprietary aesthetic method tool. Okay, so you might find yourself struggling to convince patients to get on these long-term care plans, or perhaps you already have a unique consultation or treatment process, but you're really in need of a smart way to package up and sell that methodology. You can head over to klcconsultants.com forward slash proprietary method to learn more and to register. No, this is not a free webinar, but this is instead a million dollar strategy that I'm teaching for under 300 bucks. You don't want to miss it. We'll be limiting this to 20 participants, so be sure to get thyself registered early. Okay, goddess, I hope this episode was helpful for you and you feel more empowered to make some bold moves as we move forward into 2023. And it is your time to cultivate abundance during an ascetic recession. All right, I'll see you next week. Wait, before you go. Hey, if you're vibing with this conversation and you want to join me on my mission to help 100 inspiring and intentional women cross the next million dollar milestone in their business this year, or leader, maybe you want to become one of them, head over to Facebook and join our free community, The Fierce Factor Society. Over there, we're taking this conversation to an elevated level, get access to resource guides, podcast supplements, guideposts, and direct communication with me, my expert team, and of course, a society of fierce women making big moves and disrupting the status quo in aesthetic wellness. You can link directly through the show notes or head to Facebook and search the Fierce Factor Society. See you there, goddess.